Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Hi, hello -y. my name is Loey, and today we are back once again to scroll through the scary side of TikTok while I show you guys some of my favorite spooky videos I found on the platform recently. I feel like my TikTok algorithm has finally figured out that I like spooky stuff because a lot of these videos came from my own For You page, which is kind of crazy. Usually I so heavily rely on you guys to tag me in your favorite spooky finds, which still makes up the majority of these videos. If you ever want to participate, you can go follow me over on TikTok at LoeyBugXO and give me a tag in your favorite scary videos. I'm always lurking and seeing what you guys are finding on TikTok, so you might just see your video pop up in the next scary side of TikTok. Today I have for you 26 of the scariest TikToks that have been haunting my brain lately, but before we get into them, I want to say a big thank you to this video sponsor, Hungry Root. Hungry Root is an online grocery service that makes eating healthy and delicious food a breeze. Now you guys know I am not a first time user of Hungry Root. I've talked to you about them before and they continue to be my favorite online grocery service. You tell them a little bit about yourself on their short fun quiz that you get to take before you sign up about what foods you like to eat, what foods you don't want to or can't have, your dietary needs and goals, whether it's like eating more plants in 2024 or just discovering some new recipes and saving money, then Hungry Root sends you weekly grocery deliveries along with 10 minute recipes that you can use to cook your meals. Now you can totally let Hungry Root choose your groceries for you based on the information you gave them in your quiz, but you can also look over what they're gonna send you before they're gonna send you it, and you can make some edits, add some things, take out some things. Here's my little Hungry Root haul from the week. I am loving what I got between my meals and also these snacks. There were a couple different pumpkin spice flavored things in this order, which I loved. I'm such a pumpkin spice girly, and I feel like this time of year, nobody ever includes it in anything anymore. But see, Hungry Root knows I like pumpkin spice things because the more you use the service, the better it gets to know you, the more you let it know what you like, what you don't like, the more that it figures out exactly what you're going to love. Use my link in the description box down below or scan the QR code on screen right now and use code LOEYLANE40 for 40% 40 off of your very first Hungry Root. Root order. Thank you so much to Hungry Root for sponsoring today's video and if you guys do want to shop through Hungry Root using my code and my link helps out the channel so very much so I really do appreciate that and now let's get to the scary videos. So our first video comes from the account Roots of Orthodoxy and I think that this is from like a documentary of some kind. I'm not really sure what it was about but it might stand to assume that it was religious in nature because it starts off with a priest being filmed inside of a church. The priest is trying to tell a story when suddenly a loud knocking sound is heard from within the church and it's repeated. It's like banging over and over again. And the priest kind of makes a little joke like maybe it's the woodpeckers or maybe it's the demons. Hmm, where is that coming from? Maybe it's woodpeckers. It's either that or the demons. They love to interrupt. And you know what demons really hate is that when you laugh at them and you don't take them seriously and you just say, oh, it's just you. It's, it's just you, Goofy, trying to interrupt the telling of uh, one of the greatest stories and parables ever told. But the knocking continues and things take kind of a sinister tone. Maybe I'll chase off the demons. I'll be right back. Hey, you guys. Hey, hey, be gone. <laughs> be gone. <laughs> and don't disturb us anymore. All right. The peace of the Lord. I love the idea that he just like went outside and shooed away the demons like they were like stray cats or something. As somebody who grew up in churches all throughout my life living in Georgia, some of them in very deep south Georgia, trust me when I tell you I know that those places can be pretty freaking haunted. But I loved this clip. It was like one of those TikToks that I just like went back and watched it again and again. Just I liked the priest's attitude about it I guess, like the fact that he was kind of like laughing at it and not taking it too seriously 
while also being very firm in his own conviction that the demons were gone, they weren't welcome there, you know? I just really liked this TikTok and I thought it was a good one to start off the video with. Now, I don't mean to brag, but you guys might have seen your girl going a little viral on TikTok last month and Instagram and YouTube all with the same video about the Reddit lamp guy story. I won't rehash that here for you, but I used a sound for that video that was going really viral on TikTok specifically to tell people's creepy stories. And it is the song, Oh Superman by Lori Anderson. Now, the next few TikToks I'm gonna show you all come from a trend of people sharing paranormal stories but all of them have like a really deep twist to them, I guess. Most of them are from people who have lost loved ones. And these paranormal experiences are coming as like signs from their past loved ones. This one is from TikToker Meet Suited. My dad passed away from leukemia in March of 2011. I was 14 years old. A few months later, after a particularly hard day, I sent him this message on Facebook and it reads, hi daddy, I miss you so much. Why did you have to die? Why couldn't you just stay here? Do you miss us? Us as much as we miss you. As someone who's also lost their father, totally understand this. I have sent similar messages to his completely defunct Facebook in the past. It just feels like a way to talk with your past loved one, you know? But what you never expect is to get an answer. And that's what this TikToker got. The very next day, I got a drink at a gas station. I had grabbed a soda, but decided last minute to grab a Sobe, Sobe water instead. I had never tried one before, and it was a random choice. This was on the inside of the cap and it's the message, miss you like crazy. The fact that it was like a direct response to her message, like a perfect answer to her question, like do you miss us as much as we miss you, is just so special and I really do think it was her dad's way of letting him know that not only is he still around, he misses her too. This one is from Des. Um, these are screen recordings because they're like slideshow compilations, so I'll have people's actual usernames written out like when I put in the TikToks and down below and stuff if you want to check them out. My dad passed away at 34 drinking and driving and had a huge Superman tattoo on his arm. Don't have a pic. Ordered a mystery pen off of TikTok that I did not know also comes with a free random sticker. And you can see that the mystery pen was Superman and the sticker says too young to die too drunk to live. This next one comes from Galby Girl and reads, my dad passed away unexpectedly when I was 22. We started seeing his face in random places. This one gives me chills. Like in this photo of a curry plant. This was only a few days after he passed away in this exact room. You can literally see what looks like a man, like in this photo, looking at the plant. A few weeks later, my mom randomly saw a YouTube clip of an old Indian movie on YouTube, and there was a one second scene of someone who looked just like my dad. My dad was 15 when this movie came out. Six years after he passed, I had a job interview for a job I really wanted. The interview happened to fall on his birthday. After the interview, I was sitting on my bed and just randomly saw his face in the bedroom floor. This was the first time I noticed this in a year of living in the apartment. I ended up getting the job. It felt like I was being divinely guided. The next one is not really as emotional as the last couple though. It comes from TikToker M who just captions this, this random lady who appeared in a picture my dad took of our house. She zooms in, there's clearly somebody standing there. It almost looks like somebody like at a funeral or something in all black holding like a flower in their hands. And the TikToker says, doesn't look like anyone we know. Things like that are so creepy, like seeing things on photos you've taken and realizing you couldn't see it with your naked eye is just such an unsettling experience. And this photo in particular, just knowing that someone was standing in my house while I was just randomly taking a photo of the kitchen, creepy. Really, really, really creepy. But I have one more of these and this one is my favorite. It reminded me a lot of this Stephen King story that I really love. I don't wanna spoil anything, but it's in his book, If It Bleeds, which is like a collection of his short stories. And it's, it's just really creepy. Anyway, this TikTok is from Nathan Diaz and it says, my dad passed away a little over a year ago from a heart attack and other complications. I get comfort in texting his number and telling him what's going on. One day I text his number saying, I feel like I failed him. We don't have access to his phone or phone number. And this reply gives me chills. Hi to buggies, you don't fail me. Loves, I, oh my God, like full, full goosebumps all over my entire body. Like 
Nathan also says, I never expected to get a text back. He was the only one to ever call me by that name. I can't even imagine what this must have felt like, but what like a beautiful confirmation from your dad that he's here, that you never ever, of course, failed him. I'm sure he never expected an answer. That would have scared the crap out of me if I were in Nathan's shoes, but I also hope it's just I don't know, like a really comforting feeling that his loved one is always with him. This trend really re-solidified for me that like when we're gone, at least in, you know, my opinion, I guess, I don't think we ever really leave. I think we hang around our loved ones and make sure that they know that we're still with them. I've experienced too much to ever say otherwise and trends like this where people have similar experiences and way crazier ones than mine are just so special. Did you ever think you'd get onto a Loey Lane video and see George Santos looking back at you? Because I didn't either. So George Santos was going really viral in December when I was pulling all these TikToks for this video, but I got so backlogged on my content. We had the two gigantic videos of our 100 scariest TikToks of the year come out. I just didn't get around to filming this until now. So maybe this is a bit outdated, but I I still wanted to include it because I'm minding my business. I've seen so many unhinged George Santos cameos because that's what he makes now instead of being in office. Hey, Suzanne, just wanted to stop by to congratulate you on finally transporting your dead husband's spirit into a mannequin. I know you tried for years, but you finally got the right person to help you. And I'm so glad you did and you were able to make it happen. I want to wish you and Jacob the best ever Christmas since now death will never keep you guys apart ever again. I'm so excited for you. Look, the whole gang at Cold Stone Creamery love you. I love you. And I look forward for you to enjoying and making all those new memories now with your new beau, uh, Jacob, in his new vessel. Bye. <laughs> Why? Why did someone pay like $400 for that? I don't know what the context was. I don't know why Cold Stone Creamery was so invested in this haunting, but congratulations to Suzanne. I, I guess have a happy life with your mannequin husband. Okay, on to something genuinely scary. Although I don't really think that this account could be called like a horror account, the next couple of videos I have all come from the account Briscoe Park. Now, you might have seen some of these clips float around on your For You page, and Briscoe Park for lack of a better word, is just like a really cool artist who explores random places, takes the most beautiful content of them. I think they're also a photographer. I kept seeing people say that their work reminded them of Ethel Kane, and then the poster came out and said that they had actually shot Ethel Kane, like taken photos of them. Anyway, for me, my journey with Briscoe Park, with this account in general, started off with this video where they are just minding their business in a boat in a swamp in the middle of the night for some reason, when suddenly they start to hear church bells. Now, Briscoe Park has actually posted a TikTok of a church, which it totally could have been that church with the ringing bells that they heard. I don't think that this was meant to be like a super paranormal thing. I think it was just a creepy video that they put up. However, I really appreciated Morg, one of my absolute favorite TikTokers, kind of breaking down the phenomena, I guess, of hearing church bells when there's no church around. So picture this. You're out alone at night by yourself. You are completely by yourself. And as far as you know, there are no buildings around you. Suddenly you start hearing something. And the closer you listen, it sounds like church bells. Your first thought would probably be, oh, I guess there's a church nearby that I missed. But what if you're hearing that and there's no church? Growing up, I was always told a like wives tale, if you will, I'm not sure what you would call it, but I was told that if you randomly hear church bells, it means that spirits are passing by you. And you're supposed to ignore them and not bother them while they pass. 
personally for me that just regardless screams warning and you're not supposed to be where you are so i wouldn't run i don't know if the rules are the same in the swamp as they are in the appalachian mountains but i would just calmly and carefully get out of there if it were me i think it's really interesting that a lot of these phenomena will have an explanation behind them not in the sense that like here's what this is it's just here's what to do if you encounter this and nine times out of ten it's get the heck out of there but as for briscoe park they have recorded a church before as well this really beautiful one this video in particular was where every one of the comments was like this might be ethel kane do you guys want a video about Ethel Kane. Do you want a video like a breakdown of the horrors of Preacher's Daughter? Or is that like, are, are, would, would we make it through that without therapy? Should I do that? This year, I'm kind of thinking about doing like almost like video essays on topics like that of horror hidden in plain sight in like modern media. Like I think that's so interesting in a way less serious way I also think that the haunting of Taylor Swift is really interesting like the way that Taylor uses the word haunted throughout her music but back to Briscoe Park I just really like these finds there's not really like much audio to show you here usually they're put over scary music which makes sense obviously it's clearly trying to like set a spooky tone this video in particular was filmed during a blood moon so there's like a red moon hanging in the sky and it was captioned that the poster found a house at the end of this corn maze. So we walk through the corn maze with this red moon in the sky, which is pretty freaking creepy in itself, until finally we come across a house with a glowing red light in the top window. Now I'm unsure if the next video is of that same house, but it's one of the few exploration videos on this account without any kind of like copyrighted audio or anything. So I'm gonna let you listen to the sounds of the creepy forest while this creator explores this abandoned house in the swamp. There are no jump scares, don't worry, but it is pretty spooky. Now, I don't know if you caught that, but about six seconds into that clip, people think that you can see a pair of glowing eyes outside the house, staring in at the poster exploring. And this really is not an account that I will like keep you up to date on with the videos unless some crazy ARG starts happening. It's more just one I wanted to recommend to you for some spooky vibes. Y'all know I love my ring camera videos. Anytime that something is caught on like a doorbell cam or a camera that people have in their house for any reason, a paranormal thing by the way, like a, like a spooky thing like that, I just think it's so interesting because it's not footage we ever would have seen before the popularization of these types of cameras in your home. For Sarza Hop over on TikTok, I don't think she was ever expecting to catch this on camera. On a random morning in September, my three-year-old woke up wanting to see his sisters. He never wakes up this upset. Now the mom's talking to him and he's hysterical saying, I want my sisters, I want my sisters. And she's like, you don't have sisters, like what are you talking about? Sadly, the poster had suffered from six miscarriages between her son and his older brother, which isn't really something he knows about, and yet he seemed to know that he had missing sisters. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. 
What I think is incredible is that at the end of this video, you can see two little orbs like run around his nursery, almost like his sisters who were visiting him got excited that they were being acknowledged by their mother. I can't talk about this one too much longer because I'll probably start sobbing, but it's just so beautiful and so heartbreaking. But I also truly think it was this poster's babies coming back to visit their little brother. From Ryan LaSala, who is a horror author over on TikTok, we have an incredible set of photos from a spooky TikTok slideshow, and I couldn't not include this. This is my cat, Haunted Little Girl. Haunted Little Girl is such a cutie pie. However, this is the crucifix I found buried in her litter today. No one knows where she got it. And then there's this photo of her at the end with her little glowing eyes, and it just says, please pray for me. And I normally don't read you TikTok comments, but I literally screen recorded these because they made me laugh so hard. I believe that's called a spooky dookie is a pretty good one. My cat fighting demons in parentheses using the litter box. Don't know how haunted little girl got a hold of that crucifix, but my God, did she make incredible work of it in her litter box. You go haunted little girl. I approve of your wicked ways. Let's go back to my beloved Morg, who I do have a couple of other videos I wanted to show you today. Now Morg, I think has had a TikTok handle change. They are now Morg's Hauntings. If you ever wanna check them out, I'll have her link down below. When she posted this video, it stuck with me for days. It's captioned, that's my voice, but that isn't me. I think that is one of the creepiest things that I have ever caught on camera and that I have ever experienced in my life. That sounds almost identical to my voice. Like, I complete, I thought it was 100% and then I listened back to that recording and I was like, something's off. Which is the way it goes with these things, it's always almost correct. I was careful to not respond to it and after I took that video, I walked away and came back later. But yeah, I guess it's using my voice on me now, which is weird. If this is even the same thing, who knows? We have a melting pot of paranormal things happening in this house and to me at all times. But yeah, that was creepy. I'm so glad that I started recording because no one would believe me without that. Has anyone else ever heard their own voice? That's so weird. Like, I always, I've heard other voices, but my own. If you're unfamiliar with Morg's story, Morg lives in the very haunted Appalachian Mountains and regularly experiences and posts about paranormal phenomena. One of the spirits or things that's always been around mimics her husband and can be seen sometimes in the background of her content with his head facing away from her. Like you can only ever see the back of his head. And at the end of this TikTok, she said, I showed my husband the clip and apparently he heard the exact same thing coming from the same door last night when he came down to refill my water. He just ignored it. I think it's really eerie to think that like, if this is the same thing that now it's using her voice, I'm glad that she didn't like respond to it or open the door or anything that she just like left and came back, but it's eerie. Like if I were to hear that in the middle of the night, Maybe I wouldn't even know it's my own voice. You know what I mean? Maybe I would just think somebody needs help and I'd open the door and just accidentally let in this thing that is copying me into my home. Now, another one from Morg kind of sets us up for the next few TikToks we're gonna chat about from a different creator. However, this one from Morg talks about the phenomena where it suddenly will go like pitch black, just super dark in Appalachia in the middle of the day and what it means if you experience it. While living in the Appalachian Mountains for the last 25 years of my life, I've experienced some pretty unexplainable things. But one thing that I have never experienced that I hope to God I never do is the sudden change in light. If you're confused, let me explain. This is a lesser known or at least lesser talked about phenomenon that happens in Appalachia in the middle of the day. So picture this. You are out on a hike in Appalachia. Maybe you're on the trail, maybe you're just on a trail and you know that it is noon, it is 12 p.m. But suddenly, out of nowhere, when there's not a cloud in the sky, it is dark, like midnight level dark. And then shortly after it gets pitch black, nature will go completely silent. This is one of the scariest things I've ever heard, and I have heard and read countless stories of this happening to people here. So if you are unlucky enough that this happens to you, Remember that you are no longer welcome in the area that you're in and you need to calmly get out, do not run. Um, 
actually terrified of that happening. Again, I just love slash hate how every single story of like a precautionary tale that comes out of the Appalachian Mountains is always, if you experience this, no, we don't have a concrete answer. However, it does happen and you should just get out of there as quietly and calmly as possible. The next few TikToks come from Allie Shy's world. Now, Allie tells a lot of spooky stories over on her account, and I love them. I actually wound up like binging her account. You should totally check her out. But I think that this story might be a Reddit story. It said Reddit story in the caption. However, I think that Allie is like from the area in which this is describing. In this story, our poster goes to Red Gorge River for a hike which I believe is in Kentucky. Specifically, they went with a couple of friends when it was starting to get dark because they wanted to go stargazing at the end of this hike. Apparently, it's not a super hard hike. It's not like an easy one, but it's not super, super hard. And the view at the end of the stars would totally be worth it. However, during the hike, something really strange happened. As soon as we started the hike, the clouds took over and we started to get the impression that we were hiking to stargaze it nothing. But we went anyways just in case it cleared out by the time we got up there. When out of nowhere, a girl with a headlamp appears and begins to walk down the trail we are looking out at. She's in a sundress and flip-flops. And while it is a fairly easy hike, it's not easy with no water or no real shoes. Her light was bright and when she reached where the trail turned down to where we were sitting, she just stopped. She just stood there straight on like how a human is presented in an anatomical drawing. She was staring directly at all of us sitting there and I had to bring my hand up to like shield my eyes from the light because it was shining directly in my eyes. She didn't turn away from our lights at all or even seem bothered that she had six LED lamps shining right in her eyes. I said hello and she kind of with a pause between like every word said something like, hello, how are you? I said something like, good, how are you? And then she took even longer pauses and said, oh, I'm fine. She then just stood there with her hands to her side and facing and staring at us. Her light made it impossible to see her face and I had my hand up the entire time because her light was so bright until she just turned and slowly walked down the trail part that we had just come from. She got to a part where the trail light turned and we could see her light stop there for a minute until she turned and the light faded out of sight. We waited a while before we headed on up. We lay down and tried to stargaze, but the clouds are even thicker at this time and we're all miserably hot. We could hear voices at times and my husband kept checking for the people that he heard. We saw a flashlight and never saw anyone attached to it. And then we heard like a bird call, but it wasn't like a real bird noise. It was like somebody doing bird calls like rhythmic and not really natural at all. I was convinced we weren't alone and hadn't been alone, but I'm the most easily spooked. I asked to leave whenever they were ready and they were all ready to leave right then and there. And we're all walking in a row and my husband says, what's that? But the question is more of like an alert and I move my headlamp in that direction and I don't see anything at first. At the same time, all six of our lights shine on to like reflect off of a light gray creature. It's bent in a crouching position, kneeling on its right leg and it starts turning towards us. It starts to stand, but my mind is like racing still. It looks like it's a human, but it's too big. It's thin and big and almost white. It's so light gray and its skin resembles dolphin skin. Its arms hung down low like by its knees and his hands seem to be long too. I'd guess it stood around nine feet or so and not that far in front of us. We take off running the rest of the way down the trail knowing in our minds that that thing took off a lot faster than we did. We didn't talk at all because when we tried, it felt like we were going to get caught. We kept running as fast as we could, but some areas were just so steep. It never felt like we were out of the sight of this creature. As we made it to the trail beginning with the gravel, we could hear something crashing down in the forest beside us. We just ran as fast as we could to our car, and we just drove as fast as we could until we got to the main road, and then the sky cleared up and the stars were out. Now this story sent me down a bit of a rabbit hole. The original poster has this experience seeing this woman in the woods with this bright freaking light on her head. She's talking in a strange way and then suddenly she goes off into the forest where they just came from and kind of vanishes, which is weird because of the headlight. Then they get up to the top of the mountain, there's no stars, which kind of reminded me of what Morg said about the sky just suddenly going dark. Even though it was night, like none of the stars are out, they go back down and they see this flesh pedestrian-esque thing waiting for them 
in the woods. I don't know if I've ever heard someone describe what a flesh pedestrian might look like also from their own mouth. And if you're sitting there like, why are you calling it that? Just say the word, no, I refuse. I'm a superstitious girl, I'm a highly spiritual girl, and I also just know when to keep my damn mouth shut. I'm not saying it. I have enough damn ghosts in this house. But it was interesting to hear someone describe it that way because in another video from another creator, I'm gonna go over some more of Ali's first, we have a similar-ish story from somebody who also saw and described like the exact same thing. Now, Ali responded to a comment that read, have you not seen that rake they caught on video at Cliffview? No way I'm going out at night in these woods. And I hadn't seen this video either, but Ali wound up showing it and you can see what looks like a gray thing, humanoid figure hunched over and just walking around like cars. It kind of looks like they're at like a campsite or something. And a lot of people in the comments were like, this is a gray morph suit. And every time that I watch this clip, I am just like, that's a gray morph suit. And don't get me wrong, I believe in the spooky scaries. I believe in the flesh pedestrians. I believe in all of this, okay? But that does just kind of look like someone in a gray morph suit. You know what I mean? At some points, the neck looks a little long, but it could just be that the camera quality isn't great, you know? But I thought that was interesting. And then I realized Allie was kind of like from this area. And then somebody commented, not deer is apparently a thing up there, to which Ali shared this clip. Not deer is a cryptid spotted mainly in the Appalachian Mountain region. They're known for approaching humans. A few years ago, a good friend of mine showed me a video that her boyfriend, now husband, had showed her. He was approached by this very strange acting book. Not only did this book jump over like two fences to make it to where he was at, it just gave off really creepy vibes. I've been begging her since she showed me that to please send that to me so I could show you guys. And today she finally did. I'm gonna show you guys and let me know what y'all think. There was a lot of footage of the deer here, and I did think it was acting funny, but I've also seen a lot of clips of deer float around where it's been like bitten by something and infected with a parasite or God forbid has like rabies or something. As someone who grew up in Georgia also around deer my whole life, I can tell you that they don't always do like the most normal things. Like they will just like jump crazy high distances and act a little funny and all that. But but the not deer concept is pretty creepy to me. Last from Allie, she responded with a video to the comment, I've been to Red River Gorge so many times, but we never ever hiked after dark. And she replied with a POV, you're hiking at Red Gorge River after dark. This clip is really, really creepy. I cannot imagine being in the woods like this at night. Like I had one scary hiking experience ever when I was living in Texas and I was out a little bit late. It was getting close to dark. I had one weird experience with the forest and I dipped. There's some weird stuff going on out in the forest. You know, I just, I will be staying far away from that in my quiet little home indoors. Then from the TikTok account Tiff's Ghost Talk, who tells a lot of ghost stories and spooky stories of her own, she talked about the time that her brother had a crazy reaction to what she believes was a flesh pedestrian in his yard. It's important to know that I overreact and my brother completely underreacts. He calls me, he's just very like chill and he said, hey, I just saw like the weirdest thing in my yard. Um, I'm going to tell you about it and you tell me what you think. So I'm like, okay, what'd you see? Like, what was it? And he said, well, there was a helicopter flying over my house, which is normal. That happens a lot around here. And I said, okay, yeah. And, and he said, well, they had the spotlight out and they were shining it on my front door. It was weird. So I go to the front door and I'm looking at them and they're looking at me and then they just kind of circle around a little bit and then they leave. So I figure that something must be outside if they're out there like circling, like what were they looking for? So of course he takes his when he goes outside, right? Well, it has a light on it. So he said he's like scanning around looking when he lands on this thing. What kind of thing? So when the light hits it, it's on all fours. 
right? But it has like glowing eyes and its face look like a human face kind of. So I'm looking at it. It's looking at me. But then it stands up. Stands up. Like, like stood up, stood up. Yeah, it stands up like a person. And its front arms were like long. And it's gaunt looking. And then it turns, runs, and jumps the neighbor's fence. The fence is like, what, 15, 20 feet tall? Yeah, and it was like 7, 8 feet tall. What do you think that was? My brother is super artistic, so I give him a second, and he draws this and sends it to me. So he said this is what it started out as. And then it stood up to this. I sent him this, and he says, yeah, that's it. That's what it is. The fact that her brother described the same exact thing that Allie did, where the arms are like a little bit too long and it's this gray figure with zero hair and these hollow eyes, it's just so eerie to me that anyone could encounter that and like ever speak again or like live to tell the tale. That is just a terrifying thing to experience. Tiff is clearly the voice of reason here and I love that her reaction is all of our reaction. Like you saw that and you are just okay with it? This next video comes from Tiki Talkie BB and they captioned this video, this is literally the weirdest thing that's ever happened. This is not like paranormal, nor is it even that scary. It's just really weird. And I debated even keeping it in this video, but I kind of want you guys to get in on deck gate too. My sister's having a deck built at her house and this is how the contractor left it Saturday night with all the supports in place. He came back a few days later, literally someone had disassembled the deck and left all the beams there. The contractor works alone. There's nobody else helping him on this project. Someone just came and took apart everything that he built, including a 400 to 500 pound beam that they neatly laid. Nothing is missing. This happened in Rhode Island. If you have any idea what's going on, please let us know. So somebody dismantled this deck and nobody knows like what's going on. There were some follow-ups to this in which the poster was like trying to get info from their neighbor who did see like someone over there at one point, but just had no idea what they were doing, assumed that it was just people coming to work on the deck. Ultimately, the conclusion that they got to was that the people who were like delivering the wood to the house, maybe a third party vendor thought that they were not only responsible for delivering wood, but also for dismantling the deck. Maybe they thought this was like old work and they just took it down. But a lot of people in the comments were like, no, this is a neighbor who hates the idea of your deck and just came and did this in the middle of the night. Or maybe like an angry homeowners association. There was never really like a concrete answer to this story, which I think is almost weirder. Deck gate conspiracies are still going strong, baby. And to this day, there's never been an answer as to what exactly happened and why the deck was taken apart. This video has been on my list of ones that I wanted to talk about for a while, actually, since before I went to Japan myself. However, I kept seeing it re-uploaded and I knew it wasn't the original poster and I try really hard to track down like original posters of content when I do these videos. And if I ever get it wrong, I try to correct myself. But I finally found out that it was from Alexandria OK. And it's her explanation of what the creepiest thing about living in Japan as a woman is. And maybe not to your surprise, the answer to that question is stalkers. You want to know the freakiest thing about living in Japan? As a woman, you get stalked. I just woke up to something that I really hope no one else has to wake up to. My peephole was just pushed out of my door. So what I've done is I've put tissue in my peephole and now I'm putting this magnet here if this magnet moves, I know someone is actively trying to look into my apartment. I had to check and make sure that there was no marks on my door handle to see if somebody tried to break in. But the thing that's concerning me the most is the other half of this peephole isn't on the ground. So it might have fallen in the door, but I don't see how that would have happened. So. Maybe someone broke into my apartment. Regardless, I'm moving. Um, clearly somebody paid me a visit recently. Oh my gosh. 
Alexandria literally had her peephole knocked out of the door in her apartment. And then when she set up like a test, like this magnet and the tissue to see is someone gonna do it again, they did. This is really eerie to me. I've never had an experience like this in Japan specifically, but I have had horrifying experiences in the United States with stalkers, like or just people being creepy in general. Luckily, she's moving. She may have already moved, actually. I didn't look too much further into her account once I finally found her, but that is just so eerie. And living as a woman alone anywhere is just a truly terrifying experience, one that you have to take a lot of precautions for, which is so sad, but it's not just in America, it's everywhere. Ending off on a not much lighter note, we have a video, or a series of videos rather, from Kelly Arvin. This is a truly fascinating story, one that might leave you with more questions than answers, but I still wanted to share these TikToks with you. So Kelly wakes up in the middle of the night one night to the sound of high-pitched crying in her home. After this experience, she wasn't thinking much of it until her neighbor texted and reported something similar. Just after midnight on Monday, I woke up at 12.45 to really odd high-pitched sobbing. Instantly I got up and I checked my son's baby camera on my phone next to my bed. And when I opened my phone, it had a notification from the baby camera app saying that he was back in the crib. Mind you, he is in a sleeping bag. He cannot get out of the crib. He cannot move. The camera was covering the whole entire cot at this time, so I thought that was a little bit odd. I wasn't 100% on the baby camera, so I actually walked into his room to check on him and he was sound asleep. Five minutes went by and I was lying in bed thinking maybe I'm just really tired and I heard something. I heard it again. It was really, really high pitched but really low in volume and it was this sobbing, crying noise. I was quite scared, so I tapped on my husband and he was sound asleep and I said to him, did you hear that? He said, no, I didn't hear anything. So then I went back to sleep. My son slept through the whole entire night without any crying or anything, so I knew that he was okay. The next morning, I got up at around 9 o'clock in the morning and I checked my phone and I had a message from one of my close friends that lives around the corner. She messaged me at 1.03 in the morning. I will put the screenshot now. She said that she woke up and she heard someone crying and sobbing in the bathroom in her ensuite. At about 12.45 the night before, she woke up to this really odd high-pitched sobbing in her ensuite bathroom of her bedroom and she got up and she was looking around. She has three cats and they were all sleeping on her bed. One cat was asleep, sound asleep. Another cat was looking around the room and the third cat was looking straight directly into her ensuite bathroom. She looked in the ensuite bathroom and there was a window adjacent to her bed and all she could see was two hands and a face leaning up against her window on the outside. It was a white silhouette. She doesn't get scared by these things. She's quite spiritual. So she just kind of like looked around the room again. And then she's like, oh, maybe I should turn the light on. Maybe I shouldn't. And she knew it was some sort of paranormal activity. So she wasn't freaked out about it. Unlike myself, when those things happen, I get very scared. So then she rolled over and she thought, oh, do I turn my lamp on? No, I won't. So she didn't turn her lamp on and she went back to sleep. She was going in and out and dreaming. And then she woke up again and her lamp was on. She did not turn this lamp on herself. So then that's when she started to get quite scared and that's when she messaged me at 103 in the morning. So Kelly and her neighbor are both having this experience where they hear this high-pitched like wailing in the middle of the night near their homes. People in the TikTok comments were very I guess, uh, skeptical of this. A lot of them thought that maybe her neighbor was trying to scare her by hacking into the baby monitor. And Kelly made a follow-up just kind of talking through some of those things, saying that like she just didn't think they could be true and just giving a bit more information about the occurrences. The baby camera is only on my side. My friend does not have a baby. She doesn't have a baby camera. So this is completely two separate things. Number one, I didn't hear the noise through my baby camera. I checked my baby camera to make sure it wasn't my son crying. I actually heard it in the space around me. My son's room is directly next to my room and I always leave his door open when he sleeps. So I knew it wasn't through my baby camera. My 
my friend heard the crying in her ensuite bathroom and then she saw the white silhouette of the person pressed up against her window. No, my friend did not hack into my baby camera. Do I think my friend is a bad spiritual energy around me? No, definitely not. These things can happen to anybody and we just have a really strong bond and connection. So it could also be something phantom happening going on, but I definitely don't feel any bad energy about her and I trust that she is a great friend and I know that she's not doing anything wrong by this happening to me. My friend will be attending tonight a pendulum reading and she was going to be asking questions on her side about what this means. I just prefer for her to do it, her to ask what she wants and then she can give both of us clarity. I don't want to mess with this further. My final update will be all of the answers in the pendulum reading. I will let you guys know. I trust her answers from this pendulum reading is going to put my mind at ease and we can move on from this. So after this video, there was another follow-up and I thought this was going to be this pendulum reading that Kelly mentioned at the end of the last video, but this is more of like an explanation, a little bit more info, maybe an answer as to what it was, but still raises a lot of questions. I've been doing some investigating and I received a message on my TikTok from this lady that lives in my suburb, which lives near my friend's house. She messaged me saying that she thought she should let me know, but the day prior to me posting my video, her neighbors heard a similar noise and called the police. They found out it was an estranged lady that lived in the area that walked around crying outside people's houses and she was well known to the police and to not answer the door and to not intervene. This got me thinking, so I posted on my local residents Facebook page telling them my experience and I also posted my TikTok video so they could all see and tell me if they had a similar experience. I received a lot of comments and also direct messages of people telling me that they'd experienced the same thing. Whether it was this lady crying outside their house, whether it was some sort of paranormal experience, I had a lot of people in my same area experiencing extremely spooky things. This started of something spooky that my friend and I heard at the same time and now it's turned out so many people in my area hearing similar things and it's not this strange woman walking around the streets people are hearing it all over my suburb and my suburb is quite huge so it's actually impossible that this lady is going around the whole entire suburb and my next update is going to be the pendulum reading so this is a phenomenon that's happening in her like suburban area before but there is a woman who it could be this woman is going from home to home and crying or making a lot of noise. However, Kelly's unsure like if some of it is that, if some of it is paranormal, she doesn't know and we don't either. That's actually just where the story ends because despite Kelly saying that she would post the pendulum reading, I'm not sure what ever happened. It was never posted. I saw a lot of people in the comments asking if she was ever going to post it, but she never addressed this situation again and actually ended up completely moving out of that house somewhere else. And it makes me wonder if she just doesn't want to talk about it. So please do not from this video like harass her or ask her to post it or anything like that. I know sometimes you guys will check out the people who I talk about and I think that's so lovely if you have nice things to say. Um, but you know, I think in this circumstance, the fact that she moved never posted that follow-up video after like talking about it pretty frequently and making these updates pretty fast. Like it just makes me think that something happened that she doesn't want to talk about. And if she does, she'll do it in her own time. Still though, this was a pretty creepy experience and one that I'm sure was terrifying to share with your neighbor. There you all have it. That was 26 TikToks from the scary side of TikTok that I wanted to share with you all. Some spooky paranormal ones, some stalker ones. There was a little bit of everything. So hopefully I crawled under your skin for at least a little of this video. If you enjoyed, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It helps so very much and I appreciate every single one of you. A special thank you to my subscribers who are members of the channel. If you wanna join the channel memberships and get cool members only perks like members only videos you can click that little join button somewhere around the screen we would love to have you this month's members only video might already be up it might be up in a couple days but it's about the love has won cult and i'm really excited to talk about that and like the documentary that i watched on it i love doing those sorts of videos for my members so make sure to check that out if you're into just like bonus fun content for me an extra special thank you to my vip loves for their continued and generous support of the channel i love and appreciate you all very very much. I love you all very much and I will see you in my next video. Bye!